Welcome to Motif, photo books, calendars, and cards. With Motif, your best memories just got better. In this video introduction, we'll cover the basics of getting started with your first Motif photo project. Motif runs inside photos for Mac OS. To begin a Motif project, select specific photos, a memory, or an album. We'll use this Elements Portfolio album to create a portfolio of some recent photography. Simply select the album, then go to the File menu in Photos, choose Create, and then Motif. Motif creates gorgeous photo books, calendars, and cards. For this demonstration, we'll create a book, which is already selected, and then click Next. Motif offers hardcover and softcover books in classic landscape and modern square formats. We'll go with a landscape hardcover in our largest size, which is perfect for a portfolio. Let's click Create. Let's pick a theme for our book. Portfolio White is selected by default. Scroll right or left to see additional themes. More themes are coming. Portfolio Black is perfect for the portfolio we're building, so let's select that. Notice that the sample pages underneath update and using your images. While we could build this book manually, let's use Autoflow to do the work for us. Motif analyzes your images for overall quality, print resolution, familiar faces, duplicate images, and more, helping you find your best images. Based on this analysis, we make a recommendation, which you can see here. To accept our recommendation, simply click Continue. Or you can adjust how many pages are in your book, how many images are used, or how much you want to spend. In this example, we want most of the images in the album, but there were some alternate shots that might be nice to weed out. So let's adjust the image count up to 64. There we go. Click Continue and see what happens. This is Motif's page view. This is the main view in which you edit your book, add and arrange images on the pages, place text, and more. At the bottom of the screen is your image tray. It contains all of the images in your project. Images used or placed in the book have a check mark. You can hover over any image to see an enlargement. Scroll the tray horizontally to see the rest of the images in your project. As we scroll through our images, we can see that some alternate takes, nearly identical to each other, were not placed. We can also filter the contents of the image tray. Right now, all photos are shown, but we could also choose to show only the placed images, the unplaced images, or again, all photos. The main blue bar at the top here contains things that describe or modify your overall project. We'll come back to these later. Below the header are controls for zooming your page, adding pages, or changing your view. We'll use some of these in just a second. Okay, let's start working on our book. I like this cover image, but there's one I like better. Here it is. All I have to do is drag it from the tray onto the page. In this case, I'll drop it onto the existing image to replace it. There, that's great. Next, I'd like the image to be taller. If I hover at the edge of the images, I get this blue divider line, which I can drag to resize both elements on the page. As the image enlarges, the text block shrinks to accommodate it. I'd also like to zoom the image some. Clicking on the image shows the image control palette. The move and zoom tool is selected by default, so I can zoom the image with this slider and simply drag the image around the frame until it's just right. Click anywhere outside the image to deselect the box. Next, let's edit our cover text. To edit our cover text, let's select this text box. As you can see, the default text is pre-selected and the text control palette is shown here. I already know what I'd like to call this book, Elemental Images, and I've got that text on the clipboard, so I'm just going to paste that in now. Great, there it is. Let me select it now, and I'm going to make it Helvetica Nui bold, and let's make it 36 point. I could align it left if I'd like, or I could align it right, but I prefer it center, so let's keep it there. And now I'll just click outside 
the box to deselect it. Looks great. Let's take a look at the rest of our book. Just click the right arrow to advance to the next page. The left arrow takes you back. This is the inside cover. Looks great. This spread looks great too, but I really love this image and want to make it bigger and have it bleed off the edges of the page. I can do that by clicking the layout icon here. Now I'm seeing the available layout options for this page and for this image. As you can see, there are a variety of great looking options. I'm going to pick the full bleed option here and then click apply. Let's continue. Okay, here are a couple pages with some fun multi-image layouts. They look great already, but let's make them look even better by adjusting their layouts. First, let's work on the left-hand page. As you saw on the cover, we can grab the space between images to resize multiple images at once. I like this shot on the right, but it feels cramped. Let's make it bigger. Notice how the other images smoothly resize. That's better, but now let's make them all bigger. That's looking better, but I'd still like to see some other options for how this page could look. Let's go back to the layout picker. Here again, we're seeing options for how this page could be laid out, again, using the images that are already on the page. And as you can see, it really is a great way to see the variety of different ways that this page could look and pick the one that really speaks to you. Looking around, I think the one that really speaks to me is this one. So I'm going to select that, and now as we come back to the layout, we can see that it's applied, that layout, to my page. Looks great. Let's work on the right-hand page now. I like this three-image composition, but I think it could be cool to have a fourth image, and one that perhaps picks up this nice lavender palette here. So let's go to our image tray and grab this image, and I'm going to drag it onto the page, and notice that as I do, I get layout suggestions as I move it around for places I could put it or images I could swap it with. I think I want to put it right here, so I'm going to just drop it right there. You can see that the image is adjusted on the page, and I'm just going to do a little tuning up now. I'm going to move that one up, this one down, pick this guy up a little, maybe bring this one down a little. There, that's kind of a fun, interesting four up layout. Looks great. Let's move on. Ooh, I love this image on the left, and as I recall, there were some similar takes of it that I might want to pick from. To see those, I'm going to select the image, and now the image palette displays, and there's a similar image icon here, which when I select it, shows me the other takes of this image. I can browse them and see how they look in context by clicking each here. As it turns out, I think I like the one I started with, so I'm just going to keep that and click outside the box to accept it. I also want to make this bigger because it's such a great image, so back to the Change Layout dialog where I can select the full bleed option. Fantastic. Moving on to the right side of this page, I like both of these images, but it looks to me like the one on top has the horizon slightly askew, so I'm going to select this image. Here again is the image palette, and I'm going to pick the rotate tool and rotate it just slightly. There we go. Much better. Let's keep going. Ooh, love this spread. Mm, that one's great too. This one on the other hand is a little even for my tastes. I do like all the panoramic images, and I think it might be fun to try and make a triplet out of these wide images. So let's move this top image on the right over to the left hand page. We can do that by selecting it and then selecting the move tool. Now I can grab the image and drag it over here and as you see again layouts are suggested as I drag. I'm going to drop it here in the middle. Move this one up a little bit. Yep, love it. Moving on to the right side, I'm just now noticing that this image had people in it, which I'm really not wild about as this is kind of about scenics. So I'm going to select this image, and I'm going to delete it using the trash icon. I recall that there was an image that had a heart on it, which I like. There it is. So I'm going to grab that heart image and drag it to the page here. There we go. Really nice. Let's see how our whole book is looking by clicking the project view icon. 
We can now see our entire book and the page we were just on in page view is selected in case we want to do something with it, like move it. So let's do that. Let's move it. Let's pick it up, click it, drag it, and drop it. There you go. You'll also notice that the project view palette here has a few other actions. If I want to clone a spread, I can click this button to clone it. Or if I want to delete a spread, like the clone I just made here, I can simply click the delete icon, respond to the confirmation message, and the spread has been deleted. Project view is also a navigator. I can simply double click on any spread to go straight there. This makes getting around big projects fast and easy. I want to add a title page to the first page of this mountains section, so I'm going to double click on this to go right to that section. I want this whole left page to be a bold title page, so I'm going to select this image and delete it. Next, I'm going to add a text block by clicking the text block icon. There it is. I'm going to select it, and I already have some text on the clipboard that I want here, so I'm going to paste it in. There it is. Now, I'd like this centered on the page, so I'm simply going to grab this handle and drag it down until it's centered. Perfect. Moving on to the right side of this page, I want this mountain image to really say mountain, so let's make it bigger. There we go. Let's look at the rest of the book. Okay, I like it. I think we're done. Now that we're done, let's turn our attention back to the main header bar and what it contains. Your project name is here. If you'd like to edit it, just click on it to select it, and then you can change the name. I'm going to paste in the name of the book that we used. There we go. To the right is the help icon. If you'd like to get help or support from our site, you can just click this icon and then visit the help and support site. The price of your book is always shown here and detail is available. The settings menu contains a few options that change your book in large ways. You could reflow it entirely, change the theme, or change the format. There's also a handy guided tour available. When you're ready to purchase your book, simply click the checkout button, register with Motif, and complete the simple checkout process. And that's it! We hope you enjoyed this introduction to Motif. For more tutorial videos, help, and support, visit us at www.motifphotos.com support.